Over the last four league games, Dorking Wanderers have taken just two points. Starting with a second half collapse against Maidstone, the Surrey side have seen a downturn that threatens to see them slip away from the race for promotion into the National League. A hard fought point away to Hampton and Richmond Borough a few days earlier gives plenty of reason to believe, and belief will most certainly be required tonight. The visit of Ebbsfleet United provides a stern test for Mark White's side. Led by German manager Dennis Kutrieb, Ebbsfleet themselves are looking up not down when they glance at their place in the National League South, aided by a credible draw against league leaders Dartford. As the rain thunders down on Meadowbank, Dorking Wanderers manager slash owner Mark White prepares his players. I thought Saturday, I thought that's an excellent point. Really, really good. For me, that kick starts where we want to be because if we beat Ebbsfleet and they're a good side, they're a good side, then I don't know, we'll be in the top two, maybe top. More importantly, upward curve, upward trajectory, Hemel Saturday, and we're looking to kick on. Our performances here have been exceptional, like exceptional. You know, we beat Barnet 3, Hungerford 2, Hampton um, smashed them out of the park. And in reality, chances taken in those games, chances created, you know, are dozens, dozens. By the way, they're not a team to wind up. Dartford wound them up. And actually, we're not, me and Dino, we've seen them three times. Um, Hungerford wound them up. Hungerford were two up and Ebbsfleet were down to 10 men. Upset them and Ebbsfleet done them 3-2 second half. Dartford wound them up. They're not a team to wind up. The gaffer's a lovely guy, one of the nicest blokes you meet. And his team, he, he gave his team like an extra fucking 50%. This is a fucking good game to win. Like, if you know football, you know what I mean. This tonight, 2 3 0, is a good game to win. They're full time and they're a good side. Things to note, right? I think their best player, does anyone know their keeper? I think he's their best player, their keeper. Um, not dissimilar from the, uh, remember the bath keeper, like the way he comes out for everything. So I want to make sure, used to, I need him kicking under pressure. I never want him having time to spill and kick. This is a game for all the investment in the club and everything that we put into it time and money wise, this is the game tonight I really want to win. So I want to make sure that the boys out there are absolutely drilled, ready to go. Okay? Good stuff. Right, so you've done a few games without a win. It's not happened since I followed you. Does that affect how you're approaching this game? No, not at all actually. No, not at all. Um, because, um, yeah, a couple of games actually, but I, mean, I just measure football by performances always. Um, otherwise, you send yourself off in a different direction. If you start measuring results, but performances are good, then before you know it, you're changing three players, signing two, changing a different four, going to a different formation, changing the penalty taker, set pieces, and then you go from bad to worse. So, interested to know more about your oppo manager tonight. You were talking about Dennis, is that right? Dennis, yeah. Um, yeah. You seem to have a lot of respect for him. Where's that come from? Well, no, it's small things really. I haven't just met him really, but we went to it. We went there to watch a game, um, and um, he made a big effort to, to come and say hello because he saw us on the list and and he, he, he looked into the club a lot. He's a full-time manager, come over from Germany, and uh, Ebbsfleet have taken a I guess a punt on him. I guess you could say for you don't see many foreign managers at this level of football when you need to know inside out, you know, all the little bits. Um, and yeah, he's a, he's a real nice guy, a really nice, respectful guy. I might be saying the opposite at close of play today, you never know. We can put them into a hell of a game if we want early bells. If we play with the pattern and pace we can, we can put these into a hell of a fucking game. They'll realise they're in a game after about a quarter of an hour, this mob, big time. So we have to get that pattern and shape going, get the ball down, buzz it about, bop it about, take good care of it when it's tight, move the ball on early, Take less touches when the game's tight. Keep passing it on. But I tell you what, when we get in the last third, we need to fucking get at them. Run at them, get at them. The centre half is slow. Both of them are quite slow. One's very slow. We run at them. Big time. Great warm up. The pitch is fucking perfect. Great situation going on. 90 minutes is a long time for this Dawkins Wanderers team to win a match, okay? We've got, listen, we've got fucking five nils in us, boys. We've got five, six nils in us against anybody. 
Right, we know that. We fucking know that, okay? Let's be defensively strong. So just have a really fucking good 70 minutes at some point doing all the right things, okay, boys? Let's get cracking. You've got a couple of minutes. Good luck, mate. Dennis, good luck, mate. Thanks, mate. Press him! Press him! As instructed, Dorking immediately pressured Jordan Holmes in the Epps Fleet Gold, a tactic that allows the home side to regain possession multiple times in the opening quarter. Take him on. It's a fast start from Wanderers as they create space and drive forwards into the Epps Fleet half. Now McManus's volley is a sign that Dorking wish to throw everything they have at their opponents. Unlucky! Turn around! Good start! Good start! Turn around! One on one! Matt Briggs on the right flank drives forward in characteristic style, narrowly missing the target. Put that in that when he hits it. After some neat passing in a tight space, Luke Moore runs at the Ebbs Fleet defence, playing in McManus whose effort is blocked. Ebbs Fleet eventually get on the front foot themselves, creating the best chance of the game, Rhys Grant ruining his tame finish from close range. Oh my days! Play! Play! With 23 minutes on the clock, Dorking's pattern of play clicks into gear. Controlled, sensible passing coupled with smart movement creates oceans of space, which allows Alfie Rutherford to spring the offside trap and get in down the left channel. He cuts back for the arrival of Matt Briggs. Great goal! We don't be tight to in here. Off the ball. Moro, Foggy, you three, tighten up. The Epps Fleet response is positive but somewhat impotent. Rakesh Bingham's low drive hardly troubling Sam Howes. It's the same result when Reese Grant finds space enough to shoot from long range. This midfield marking is, is, is costing us a little bit here. We are fucking so gung-ho. We're so gung-ho for 1-0. The problem is, the problem is we're desperate for win. So they're, they're desperate for win, to, but they're putting too much into it, trust me. On the stroke of half-time, a misplaced throw from Holmes very nearly costs his side dearly. Holmes is rescued by Sefa Karaman, but even he couldn't deduce where the real danger would come from. The resulting corner allows Charlie Rowan to become the villain of the piece. Defeating his own goalkeeper with a perfectly executed own goal. Go on, Jukes, well done, mate. Well done, mate. <laughs> to find out why Jukes is getting all the credit, we must travel back in time exactly one hour. Um, loads of shorts, as many shorts as we can. As soon as that in swing has been done, that in swing on the keeper, after that, loads of shorts. So, Moro, Kane, please organise that. Whether it's the switch, whether it's on straight away, the cutback, or we need ways to come and play one two. As many shorts as we can, please. It's the kind of goal not seen since the days of Ian Dowie. Perhaps Charlie Rowan just wanted to give Dukes a helping hand. Baz! Barry! Baz! 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 Fuck me! Baz! This is untidy. We are untidy. Okay, Baz! Baz, we need more shape. Less one touch. There's just enough time left for Reese Grant to test Howes from range one more time. Right, boy, we haven't got a lot of time here, and Ed's drawings are him, so I've got to have a little think at the same time. So I need your support in sitting down and listening, please, for me. Off the ball, nowhere near good enough. You know me, and you trust me. Play football on what you see. They've had enough shots off from dangerous areas, and a one-on-one -on -one at nil-nil. They've had enough chances to do more with it, haven't they? It's not... Two-nil is a fantastic result at half-time, especially when we've got a lot more in us. But what you're doing is... You're playing the most stupid game of all. You're, you're trying to play at a thousand miles an hour. I credit you for that because I know you just want a W tonight and I know that and I get that. 
But what you're doing is you're allowing the ball to be turned over by trying to be too dynamic, too quick. Massive third man runs, bad overlapping. And this is a game where you just need the ball. And then when they've got the ball, we just go and hunt it and we press them. We win it back. Right, I want to make sure we play now. Because they, I'm telling you now, they will up the ante. They've got it in the locker. I told you before the game. So I'm not making it up. They will up the ante. They've got that in the tank. Right, they're full time as well. We have to fucking go again here, boys, okay? Nil nil mentality. Press the fuck out of it. Get the third. It's done. Right, come on. Come on. What do you, how, how do you reckon it is, Ed? Hey? I'm not happy with that. No. I mean, last week it was all right when Pryor was fucking come off near half a foot. Let's hope we got this the other way around. Go midfield's where the battle is. I'm telling you. Listen, you two are better than them in there, but you've got to be tight. Right? You've got to encourage the rest of the team, kick the ball. Don't let us kick down gung over. It's too much. Yep. It's too much for you two. You're both feeling fine though, yeah? Yep. Okay, good. I've, yeah. got, I've got loads of options. Anyone got a definitive yet? Yeah, that's what we should do or not? If not, I know. Yeah, that was mine. Yeah, that was mine. Poo pooed all that. Shit, shit, <laughs> shit, shit, <laughs> shit. Um, I don't disagree about the shape. Um, yeah, it's personnel, isn't it? It's personnel, but um, you shouldn't underestimate. The nine's got a bit of pace and he's all right, mate. But also, we need to, the, for, the change needs to reflect the scoreline. Mm. It's 2 0. So it doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be good. Dan? Um, I'm thinking I'm, it could be a double, Dan and Sammy. And then, in fact, Niall normally goes inside, doesn't he? So actually, we know we'd go Jimmy. So Jimmy would go on a flank, definitely. Niall would come inside. So that's like fucking about 18 changes. Yeah, that'd be, um, that'd be all three. yeah at once. Can't be doing that. Whew. Fuck. Oh. Hold on. Hot, keep your hands warm. I didn't have that one. Water to rehydrate you. <laughs> More sugar, hold on. Yeah, sugar. As the second half kicks off, Mark is still trying to work out how to reconfigure his team. No, listen, listen, leave it to me, boys. Let's not, let's not, let's focus. Let's make sure we're coaching what's going on and I'll work this out, okay? Right, boys, you're both going on, okay? That's what we're doing. Listen, Kane's going to come off, so it'll be more rather foggy running about, okay? With Ed Harris feeling a groin strain, his substitution is inevitable. Listen, the minute we make changes, Jukes, maximum coaching needed. Okay, wingers high, midfield lock on, maximum concentration. While Dawkins attempt to adjust, Epps fleets are pushing to get back into the game. Will Wood hitting the woodwork. Will Woodwork, if you will. Fucking switch on! Ready! Switch As Mark is irked by his team's apparent sleepiness, the away bench is getting increasingly rolled by the refereeing decisions. The only reason why we get the free kick is because all of us are shouting. That's the only reason. Still, Dennis Kutrib's side are growing in confidence. Substitute Wood is at the heart of a spirited response. Sadly for Dennis and his side, Waywood finishing puts pay to any notions of a comeback. Rather, the second half lacks cohesion and is defined by niggly challenges. James McShane is lucky to escape with a booking when he wipes out Jack Paxman. Go on, on your own! Dorkin do eventually create some openings. Now that Manis streaks forward and the ball eventually falls to the ever dangerous Briggs. Finish, finish! Lucky Briggs, Luke. Dan Gallagher's back post header proving to be the best chance of the half. Late on, things get a bit weird when Bobby Joe Taylor attempts some sort of domination stance while standing over Sammy L. Ampt off of the ball. Sammy's back on the floor. And there's something about this exchange that makes you wonder if footballers ever actually grow up. They've lost the plot, just get over the line, come on. With all the handbags going on, the referee's forgotten to look at his watch. A couple of minutes into injury time, and he still hasn't told the benches how long there is left to go. How long, right? How long has he got? How long has he told you? He's only, he's only got a few mandatory things to do. 
There's only a few things you've got to do, isn't there? Like, there's, a few, there's only a few things you've got to get right, and time is one of them. He's played three minutes already, tell him! Sammy! He's played three minutes already! Does he know that? Cheers, Dennis, mate. When you get your striker, you're going to fly. You know that. Cheers, mate. Cheers soon, mate. Cheers, mate. Yeah, listen, it weren't going to look pretty. We won that Boston League that year by 22 points, down into back fours and looking shit for fucking 40 minutes. That's what we made a living out of that year to be fair it weren't going to be pretty but it was the right decision at 2-0 to give them a spare player um, and to just sit in and defend luckily you know they're not very good at shooting right but, but we've got to make sure that we are much more difficult to beat and what we, and I'm really pleased with the clean sheet don't get me wrong but I'd be lying to you if I said you know if they had a uh, Jake Robinson he would have found the net tonight 100% that's how football works. So we've got to be honest about that. They've got too many shots off. They've got into good areas, right? So we've got a lot of the right things happening. And now we need to have a bit of a recall on Thursday to see who's injured and that for Saturday. Hemel are a team built from the league below. Just started getting results. You know, we always have a target on our back, don't we? But what a good time. It doesn't matter. Getting, I think we all needed to get that first win today. We had to get that first win for a little bit in the league. And I think that's why we played a little bit untidily, a little bit, can we fucking kill the game when we didn't maybe need to. So we'll just, we'll just tidy up a little bit, we'll work on it at training, um, but for now we'll just really enjoy waking up with a, a fucking W. It was an all round very good performance, including the sub, so I'm really pleased, okay? Good stuff, get the boys and lads. Yeah, it always feels really good. I mean, I, I, I tend to go back, I mean, listen, you want to win first and foremost, but um, I tend to, um, you know, worry about the performance and, and, and fitness of the players and the second half was a back to the wall. Um, I mean, look, on purpose, I mean, we dropped into a deep back four, which we kind of never do really, um, ever. Um, designed really to hold on to the lead because we took an injury to um, Ed Harris, who's a, a key player for us at the back, groin strain, and we had to take him off, protect him. No, really pleased though. Um, just getting a win is what matters, you know, that's the bottom line. Um, and then you... You know, the boys are all getting uplift by 10, 15 percent going to the next match. I mean, they're, they're a big club. They've been in the, I used to go and watch them um, when they was in the division above. I think they've been in that division above for decades. Um, and I used to go and watch them when we was way down the park leagues and in front of their 3,000, 4,000 they put in there. A massive club. And we've just beaten them 2 0, you know. So we're really happy about that, you know, and that's a, we've done the same last year, you know, just, it's another first. It's, you know, beat Maidstone home and away, full-time teams. Um, so whilst the expectations are big here, when you take a step back, it's constantly box ticking. Tonight's another box ticked. Despite being on the losing side, the league's nicest manager agreed to give us an interview. What a nice guy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Dennis Kutrip. I'm the manager of Athlete United and we lost today 2-0. <laughs> uh, I'm here since the uh, beginning of August. Um, now it's five months. I think it's a difference, it's a big difference um, because every country has its own special yeah, own things and own special things. Um, uh, I, I enjoy the journey until here. Um, when I look at the table, I'm not happy because we are not where we want to be. Uh, but especially when you see here the game today, I think that's exactly the, the mirror what we, what we have uh, yeah, or what we get until now. Uh, didn't wear sharp enough in the first half, played a great game in the second half, uh, could, back, uh, could come back with a goal and then we are in the game, but didn't have the luck at the moment, what you need. Without uh, results, I would say everything is brilliant, everything is perfect, but in football the most uh, important things are the results. So bottom line is I'm not happy, but um, I'm very happy with the, uh, with the club. I'm very happy with the people w which are working in the club. Yeah, I played uh, in the third league in Germany and uh, pff, yeah, I played my whole life, I think at least 25 years or something like this. So um, I, I would say I'm, I was an experienced player and then straight after, uh, after I stopped playing, I get in the manager role and uh, had 
three different clubs in Germany in, 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 in six years, I think. Uh, a few promotions and yeah, that was the reason why I get the call to come to England. I was really interested by the, the things you were saying. Like yeah. You've only just come over from Germany, yeah. you're saying exactly what an English manager would be saying. Yeah. Um, but it was also quite a frustrating experience yeah. in that dugout. Yeah. Um, partly because you had so many chances that just didn't hit the target. And also because of the referee. The referee yeah. was a little bit off today, I thought. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's for me, it's, it's annoying to talk every week about them. It's really annoying because we get it week in, week out. Um, uh, and to be fair, it's not the reason why we lost the game today. Of course, I was not happy with him because of the decision making. Uh, I'm not sure if the first goal was offside or not. The boy said it was offside, but we will see in the video. But anyway, it doesn't matter because we lose the game and um, the lines, liners didn't raise the flag. So it was no offside. Uh, but you, it, it, it takes time. It takes time to get used to it and to be a little bit more relaxed. So in the beginning, it was more complicated. As I said, it's not the reason why we uh, lost today. And um, I, I'm getting used to it uh, better week by week. And I'm sure in four or five weeks, I never, never will say anything more to them because we have to handle it. We have to deal with it. And that's football. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse. Uh, we have to deal with it. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. I really yeah. appreciate that. Thank you. In order to keep Bunch of Amateurs going, we need to grow. We need you to hit subscribe and tell your friends about us.